Guys, it's Boxing Gossip here. Uh, my intention is going to be that this is the final video that I do on Derek Chisora versus Kubrat Pulev before their fight tomorrow. Now, I've just watched the weigh-in. Uh, the weigh-in footage I saw was on YouTube, and I'm going to admit it wasn't overly clear. Um, but it appears there has been some large melee, brawl, antics, however you want to phrase it, at the weigh-in. Although it wasn't clear on the footage I'm watching, I don't think it was quite as dramatic as what we saw when Chisora came to blows with David Hay at the famous post-fight press conference after he fought Klitschko. But I think it's of a similar ilk. Uh, there seems to be lots and lots and lots of people involved. Uh, Derek, very, very animated, seems to be involved in confrontations with a number of different individuals. And this kind of ties in with the bad tempers we've seen leading up to this fight, where Derek Chisora did some sort of WWE-style wrestling move on Kubrat Pulev on the press conference or, or something of that nature. So high drama, lots of WWE-style build-up at the weigh-in today. Um, I can't comment on that further at this stage because, as I say, the footage that I've seen just wasn't clear enough. But let's put that to one side because there was actually something very relevant that occurred at this weigh-in today. And that was what Derek Chisora weighed in at, at the scales which was 109 kilos. Now, I've converted it. 109 kilos is about 240 pounds, which is very light 17 stone, like 17 stone 2 pounds, I believe. So Derek Shura has come in light for this. Um, I mentioned on the podcast that we did on Wednesday night that I had a source close to Chisora who had told me that Derek was in truly fantastic condition for this fight and was going to come in at the low 17s and he's genuinely been working hard and I've got to say I was quite impressed by the way um, you know we haven't seen much from Chisora in the build up here he hasn't been putting himself out there he hasn't been doing interviews he hasn't been all over social media he's very much been in recluse training for this fight apparently he's got himself into fantastic shape and he's he's weighed in very very light you know potentially that's a sign of an extremely motivated Derek Chisora um, and there seems to now be the carrot for him that if he were to beat Pulev a big fight against Anthony Joshua potentially for several million pounds uh, is going to be available if he were to win so for Derek Chisora uh, this is a fight with a huge risk reward if he loses to Kubrat Pulev I think that probably is his last chance even at top 10, top 20 level. If he beats Kubrat Pulev, he's got a world title shot, he's got a chance to cement himself as a mega name in boxing by fighting Anthony Joshua, and perhaps most importantly, he's got a, a seven-figure payday in line for him. So, Chisora looks motivated. All of this stuff in the build-up to the fight, the wrestling moves, the brawls, the melee, it's a bit silly, um, but you know, he's gone to Pulev's backyard, um, he's probably viewing himself as the underdog. He is the underdog massively with the bookies, which we may come on to later in this video. And potentially he's trying to bring out this sort of uh, aggression inside of him by all of these antics to try and really bring out the best of him in the fight. Uh, and we'll come to that. Before we do, let's talk about Kubrat Pulev. You know, Pulev, A grade amateur, you know, real, real class amateur. Uh, good record as a professional. He's certainly in my top 10 heavyweights list at this point came very, very badly unstuck, as we now know, against Vladimir Klitschko. Kubrat Pulev, for me, is, uh, you know, a sort of mid to large size heavyweight. I think he's about six foot five. Extremely reliant on the jab. Fights, very much fights behind the jab. You know, everything works off the jab. One of the best jabs you'll see in heavyweight boxing. Not only a good jab, but a jab that is used repeatedly, consistently. Um, my problem with Pulev, is I don't see him as the most well-rounded fighter. Uh, I think he's got that amateur style of jab and move and jab and move and jab, 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 and that gets you to a good position in the sport. You know, being a six foot five guy with a great amateur pedigree, with a great jab, is probably enough to get you in the conversation of the heavyweight top 30, top 40. And Pulev's a bit better than that as well. But my concern with Pulev is, um, you know, how well-rounded he is. Like. I've never seen him fight in the pocket. I've never seen him really take a fight on the inside. I don't think he's got the greatest punch variety. Uh, I don't think he's got the greatest power. Uh, I don't actually think he's got the greatest chin. Um, 
And I kind of look at Kubrick Pulev and I think, who are his best wins? Tony Thompson, Dimitrenko, Ustadov. These are all really tall guys who stand off and box with you from range. And they're guys who don't carry A-grade power. They're guys who box on the outside. They're guys who give you space, who give you time, who give you room to work. Um, I picked... Vladimir Klitschko to knock Kubrat Pulev out. And the reason I did that was purely because I viewed Pulev as having one style, which was the jab from range. And I thought Klitschko had a bigger jab, a better jab, and he had more range. And I didn't think there was anything to Pulev's game that he could adapt if um, Vladimir was beating him behind a jab. And sure enough, for me, that fight really highlighted the lack of tactical versatility Kubrat Pulev has. He's very good at what he does, but if he can't keep you at reins, if he can't use his jab from the outside, and if he struggles to get that established, fundamentally, he's a beatable fighter. Um, now, he is very good at what he does, and funnily enough, his tactic of trying to keep fighters out of range and trying to use his jab he's probably the perfect style to beat Derek Chisora yeah, if we look at where Derek Chisora has had his losses um, the David Hay fight was a bit different but other than that they, uh, Chisora has had losses against taller opponents who jab from the outside Tyson Fury being one example Vitaly Klitschko being another example the uh, controversial Robert Hellenius fight you know, Chisora has typically lost when he's gone up against the taller guys who uh, fight from range and the blueprint on how to beat Derek Chisora was really set in the second Tyson Fury fight, where Tyson Fury schooled him for 10 rounds and essentially made him quit in his corner, uh, simply by circling the ring on his back foot, moving laterally, and using that jab to crack him from range. And I've got to say, if Derek Chisora allows Kubrat Pulev to fight in that same fashion, which is what Kubrat Pulev is going to try to do, we're going to get exactly the same result. Either Kubrat Pulev by wide points decision or Kubrat Pulev by stoppage in the corner, you know, that sort of thing. Pulev doesn't have the most power. Chisora, he's still got a good chin. His punch resistance has probably slightly dropped since the David Hay fight and he's been in a few wars, but Chisora is still a hard man to knock out. And I think most likely if the fight does get stopped, it's because Kubrat Pulev is going to be 10 rounds up and they'll pull him out or something like that. But I think most likely Kubrat Pulev will win on points if Pulev is allowed to keep Chisora uh, off him and allowed to keep Chisora at range by using his jab. But this is where Chisora becomes an interesting prospect because for me Chisora will lose to the elite of the sport. He'll lose to the Klitschko's. He'll lose to the Tyson Furies. But we also know if you drop one level down from that, he can become a competitive fighter. Uh, the Robert Hellenius matchup, for example, uh, you know, that was a very, very tight matchup. The Malik Scott matchup, for example, again, Hellenius Scott, these are both guys who like to box from the outside. Again, a tight matchup, you know, that was very tight at the time of the stoppage there. Um, you know, Chisora is a guy who can cause you problems and who can mix it unless you're elite, elite level. And I look at Fury and I look at Vitaly Klitschko, especially looking at Fury and the way he boxed him from the outside and was able to move and pepper him with combinations. And I'm not sure Pulev's quite got that. I'm not sure that Pulev's got the power behind his punches. I'm not 100% sure Pulev's got the, the versatility there. Um, but I think most worryingly for Pulev is if Chisora does get inside and if Chisora can get under his jab and close down the range and get into the pocket, I'm not sure Pulev's got any way of dealing with him. At Derek Chisora's best, Chisora is a horrible guy to fight. You know, if you look at some of Chisora's peak form, if you look at the matchup he put in against uh, Edmund Gerber or Kevin Johnson, you know, one of, the, one of those guys where he was really looking at his best. He was coming into the ring at the sort of weight he's weighed in for this fight. You know, he was coming in at 17 stone, not 18 stone, not 20 stone, 17 stone. 
and he was closing the space. You know, he was not giving people room to uh, breathe, and he was stifling them and smothering their style by kind of sitting on their chest, not giving them any room to manoeuvre, and throwing combinations of power punches. You know, hooks to the body, um, you know, all, all, all of that sort of good stuff. Um, and for me, that is the key to this, because if Chizora can establish that sort of style early on, uh, I don't think Pulev is going to have a way to deal with him. Uh, I don't think Pulev is going to be able to fight on the inside like a Tyson Fury can. I don't think Kubrat Pulev is going to be able to hold and to use his size and strength like a Vladimir Klitschko did against Povetkin. I simply think if Chizora can get on Pulev's chest, um, it's a tough night for Pulev. And I don't think Pulev has the versatility to do anything other than jab from distance. So that is the key to this fight in a nutshell for me. Um, Chizora, at his best, brings a style that you don't really see in heavyweight boxing at present. You know, heavyweight boxing currently is dominated by the, the six foot ten monsters. But at his best, Chizora is a guy who can get low. You know, Bob and Weave, Joe Fraser style, David Tua style. Don't get me wrong, he's a poor man's Joe Fraser. But nevertheless, he's a guy who can get low, who can move his head, uh, you know, can come in from side to side, uh, get under your jab and then unleash five or six hooks either side of your body and then go upstairs and sit on your chest so you've got no range to jab him. And if he brings that to the party, I don't think Kubrat Pulev's got an answer to it. I don't think Kubrat Pulev's going to shut him down or tangle with him on the inside. But at the same time, a Chizora who's kept on the outside, and the way to do that is by a stiff jab and fast feet, is a guy who resorts to eating a jab all night and throwing crude overhand punches from the back of the hall, you know, these sort of ridiculous long looping overhand hooks that he throws from six foot away. For me, this fight, we are going to know who's going to win inside the first two rounds. If Pulev comes out in the first two rounds and establishes his jab straight away and has success in keeping Chizora off him, keeping Chizora at range, hitting him with the jab, and if we start seeing Chizora throwing long overhand punches from outside the pocket, for me, it's game over. Chizora will get chipped away at, Pulev will set up a points lead, Chizora will get frustrated, come out of ideas, and lose either by late stoppage or by wide points decision. But if we see Derek Chizora coming out with some semblance of foot speed, with some semblance of head movement, if we see him getting under the Pulev jab, if we see him able to close down the gap, if we see him getting on the inside and roughing up Kubra Pulev, then I think the fight's only going to go one way. And I think that way is Chizora by late stoppage or Chizora by wide points win. You know, Chizora, like Pulev, isn't a crazy knockout puncher. He's not got immense power. But over a 12-round distance, that kind of style can really wear away at an opponent and can really drag them to places they haven't been before. You know, I've not seen an opponent in Pulev's professional career sit on his chest, rough him up in the pocket. You know, that's going to be very, very new to Pulev. And I just question the versatility there. You know, all of his wins against Ustinov, Dimitrenko, Thompson, they all came in the same way to me. When somebody tried to fight him in a matter that was out of his comfort zone in Vladimir Klitschko, he had no ad adaptations, no evolution to his game, and he just did the same thing that was obviously not working, and he got himself stopped. Now, Chizora is not going to devastatingly knock someone out like Klitschko did that day, but I think if Chizora, if we see Chizora getting under the Pulev jab and sitting on Pulev's chest, uh, you know, in the early rounds, then I think the fight can only go one way. Um, so in the lead up to this fight, I've been saying to people who've been asking me that I would only be comfortable making a prediction having seen the weigh-in. Because I think a large proportion of how this fight is going to go dependent, depended on how Chizora weighed in. You know, if he'd come in at 18, 19 stone, I don't think he'd have the energy or the speed to close the range on Pulev. 
because Pulev has got a very good amateur style, a very good jab, he's got good movement, etc. But because he's coming at 17 stone, because I've heard good words that the guy is in incredible physical shape for himself, I'm starting to think that we're going to see him putting in an aggressive come forward performance where he is going to be able to get low, he's going to be able to duck under. Um, and I think that's the absolute key here. Don't get me wrong, Chisora is not completely world level. But I have doubts over Kubrat Pulev. I have doubts over how he... I have doubts as to what sort of condition his career is in after that devastating loss to Klitschko. And to be honest, whilst we know he's a good fighter at a top 20 level... I have doubts as to whether he's been slightly overrated after wins over Yusnov, Dimitrenko and Tony Thompson. I think the saying Styles make fights is overused, but it's very, very relevant in this matchup. Because I just don't think Pulev is going to have an answer for Chisora if Chisora can close down the gap. Don't get me wrong, if this was a Tyson Fury he was in against, or a um, you know, a Vladimir Klitschko, I would say that they'd have the the power and the sort of the athleticism to keep him at range. But just with Kubrat Pulev, I've just got some concerns. And having seen Chisora weigh in at 17, 17, 17 stone 2 and having seen the attitude he's bringing to this fight I know it's hype I know it's WWE I know it's kind of meaningless when you step into the ring but I believe Chisora is motivated I believe he wants this I believe he wants the European title I believe he wants the huge money showdown with Joshua I believe he wants to beat Kubrat Pulev and I just think that He's got a style to beat him. And given that he's in good condition, given that he seems fully motivated, I think it's a real, real tough fight to call. Um, as I say, I think this can only go one of two ways. It can go Pulev keeping Chisora behind the jab and cruising to a win, or, Pulev, or Chisora being able to close down the gap um, Stav, Pulev and cruising to a win. I think it's as simple as that. I think we'll know in the first two rounds. As I say, if Chisora's eating a jab and throwing long overhand punches, it's game over. If he's getting low, quick double jab to the chest, quick feet get inside, left, right, left, right to the body. I think Chisora's in. And I think Kubrat Pulev may have been overrated. I question his chin. I'm not saying Chisora's going to knock him out, but I think he might wear him down. I question his power question his resume I'm just not overly sold on Pulev at this stage and I need to see more from him having uh, you know suffered that terrible loss to uh, Vladimir Klitschko I actually believe that this would be the uh, probably the biggest win of Pulev's career as well if he was to pull this off and I'm just not sure I'm just not sure uh, I think I'm going to pick Derek Chisora in this matchup I am um, I'm going to go with Derek to have his uh, biggest win of his career and the most meaningful of his win of his career here. He knows it's last chance saloon. He's whipped himself into excellent condition and he's got the style if he can use it. I may be made to look like an absolute turnip here. You know, Pulev may absolutely school him behind the jab and it may turn out exactly the same way as Chisora Fury 2 did. And if that happens, I look a bit stupid going against the one to four on favourite, and I look a bit stupid picking Chisora, who we've seen fall down time and time again at this sort of level. Um, but I'm just not convinced by Pulev, and I actually think Derek Chisora, at his best, brings a unique style to the heavyweight division um, in the context of today's division. And I just think um, Chisora is going to do it. Uh, let me talk briefly about the odds. I've seen um, 
Uh, I've seen uh, Kubrat Pulev at one to four. I've seen Derek Chisora as big as eleven to four. In other words, uh, just under three to one. You know, those sort of odds give Derek Chisora what is it about a uh, about a thirty percent chance winning at this fight? You know, three to one is what twenty five percent. Eleven to four. It's going to be uh, a little bit bigger than that. So, you know, let's say those odds give him about a 27.5%. I think Chisora is undervalued in this fight. I think Chisora can pull something out of the bag here. And I'm going to pick Derek Chisora. Um, I'm actually inclined to say that Derek Chisora may win the fight by stoppage. Uh, I'm just not sure that I think either I just don't think if Chisora can implement his style in the way I'm expecting him to I don't think Pulev's going to have any way of dealing with that um, and I guess that's my that's my prediction here really um, so I'm going Chisora to score the upset uh, I think Styles make fights and I think he's got himself in good enough nick and I think there's enough doubts over Pulev to make me want to take this uh, you know to to pick him to win and to uh, go against the bookies here and pick the outsider let me know your thoughts if you've enjoyed this do hit the thumbs up if you're new to the channel please do subscribe thanks for watching